Police in Idaho have released new body cam video in the murder of four college students. The video shows officers stopping a group of teens around the time of the murders. Officials are stressing that those in the footage have nothing to do with the killings. But police released the video hoping it could refresh someone's memory and generate new leads. It's been weeks and no suspects nor murder weapons have been identified. Retired FBI Special Agent Mary Ellen O'Toole joins us now. She's currently the director of the Forensic Sciences Program at George Mason University. Thanks for being with us. Based on the evidence, what can you infer about the suspect or suspects in this case? Well, I would say that this is someone that planned this, this crime. This is someone that went in and engaged in really unprovoked homicide. So that tells me that this is someone that is very cold-blooded, very callous, um, intended to kill these people. He went in, in in the early morning hours, so not to have a conversation. So we know that offenders leave their personalities at the crime scene. So once he left that crime scene, he still had the same personality, a cold and callous individual who engages in high risk behavior, somebody that can come across as appearing to be normal and is very attached to that knife. And I think as these, as the investigation continues, he'll have sort of a, a disregard for the, for the investigation. He will say derogatory things about the police. Um, and he probably has also, uh, at least from what I can tell right now, based on public source information, he could have a, a serious disdain for women and particularly um, the victims that he went after. I just want to pick up on two things you said right there. You you talk about the suspect <laughs> as, uh, as a man, and I'm wondering why that's your sense. And then number two, you're suggesting that we might see some kind of acting out by the suspect. Well, to the point of his of, of him being a male, I think statistically that that's okay. what we expect. However, if, if investigators received a very um, a strong lead that they were looking for a female, then they'll certainly need to uh, proceed and, and follow that lead. No, I don't think that when he's out in public, I don't think he's necessarily acting out. Otherwise, I think he would have come to the attention of law enforcement. Okay. I think this is someone that can move back into whatever neighborhood or society or city he came from and not generate a lot of suspicion. Again, because I think the public out there really wants this case solved. So they're going to turn in their next door neighbor if they thought the next door neighbor was was responsible. I think this person is being able to be a good actor and kind of hold all that that violence and those those vital ideations inside. There's reporting one student had more severe knife wounds. If that's true, what's the significance? When you look at a case like this where there are multiple victims, you look to see was any one victim treated differently. And that treated differently can mean, was that victim stabbed more times, stabbed more ex uh, excessively? Were there other injuries to that victim? Because that could mean that that particular victim was actually the focus of the attack. And that's why there was a quote unquote special treatment of the victim. And it could um, be a range of behavior that the offender inflicts on the victim but the attention is on that one or on, on those two victims. And that, that is pretty significant because it gives investigators the, the uh, information that they really want to go back and develop the victimology of that targeted victim. That becomes really important. Know as much as you can about that victim um, to be able to see at what point did that victim possibly come on the radar screen of that offender. Mm -hmm. In law enforcement circles, there's a term instrumental violence. What does that mean and how does it apply here? Instrumental violence is a unique type of violence. Two types of violence, reactive violence and instrumental violence. Reactive violence is um, if you punch somebody in the nose, they'll punch you back. <clears throat> instrumental violence is cold-blooded, it's callous, it's unprovoked, usually inflicted on strangers, but here's the key. Instrumental violence is the preferred violence of a psychopathic individual. The old term was sociopath. The new term that we use now is psychopathic. This is an individual that's not mentally ill and has absolutely no conscious, conscience or no remorse or guilt for what they do, and they prefer instrumental violence. We just have a few seconds left. Do you believe, based on the evidence in your experience, that this individual has killed before? 
I believe that based on the success, unfortunately, that this person had, this is somebody that if he has not been engaged with a human being using that knife, he's used it on a warm-blooded animal. Mary Ellen O'Toole, thanks. You're welcome.